Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Ivy English. I'm Bruce. I'm Angela, and I'm Wesley. We have a nice article for you today. The title, which doesn't tell us too much, but is intriguing nonetheless, is "All the Days of Thunder." Ooh, 好，我们的中文标题是《风雨雷电之星期四》。Yeah. And I'll read through this so you can get an idea of what's going on, and then, of course, we go through the whole article again, both explaining it in English and、um, having a little fun doing that. In dozens of languages throughout the world, the day Thursday is named in honor of a god associated with thunder and lightning. The particular god may not be the same across cultures, but the namesake is consistently a high-ranking deity that controls this specific weather phenomenon. In ancient Greece, it was Hemerodios, the day of Zeus, the god of the sky and thunder. Zeus was often depicted with a lightning bolt raised above his head. In Rome. People honored Jupiter, who was essentially their version of Zeus. In Latin, the day is called Dies Jovis. The connection with Jupiter can still be found today in French, Portuguese, Italian, and Spanish. In many modern Indian languages, Thursday, Guruvara, honors Brahaspati. Who was a god associated with the planet Jupiter? When it comes to old Germanic dialects, Thursday was Thor's day. Like Zeus and Jupiter, Thor was a powerful leader who controlled the weather. Thor was still the god being referenced when the English word for Thursday emerged, but some translations suggest that the old English word thunderstake. Actually, meant Thunder's Day. This similarity of the root of the name for Thursday among different cultures and languages is an example of a lone translation, in which a word or the root of a word is adopted by another language as its own. As the concept of the seven-day week spread around the world, many cultures stuck with the theme for each day. And just amended the name to match their particular god who fit the role. I mean, okay, yes, but also, don't you think it's cool how many cultures like think of naming time after sky things? Like、mm. we have months, which are for the moon, and we have days, which are for the sun. Especially in Chinese, you know, it's、mm-hmm. 一月 it's like 星期日 right?、Yeah. And then it's also 星期 is stars.、Yeah. That's so cool. Like, yeah. Well, we have Saturn. Saturday,、right? Sun Sunday, Moon Monday. Yeah, and then yeah. if Thursday was Thunder, Thunder Day. I can imagine they had like Lightning Day, Thunder Day, Rain Day. I don't know, but I mean, right? Yeah, it makes、yeah. sense to name days after weather. <laughs> yeah, ah,、uh, so this Angie 老师刚刚提到很有趣啊，这世界上很多文化，他们用来的指时间的时候，用到的都是跟天象有关系的。好像中文也是一样。好，一个月啊，用那个月是月亮嘛，对不对？然后星期日或者什么日啊，那个日是太阳。好，那这个那英文里面也是一样。我们知道这个呃，没刚刚提到，还有这篇文章里面提到的，其实时间我们用到都是跟天象有关的东西。我想这个应该很很自然的，因为。时间最早的概念应该就是会有白天会有晚上嘛，那这跟天有关系。The sun and the moon are what、uh, we perceive as time. Sunrise to sunset、yeah. is a day, and when the moon is at this、uh, phase, yeah,、uh, full moon, then there's more light. You can do more agriculture or hunting or fishing, and so. Yeah, it's such a powerful influence、mm. on、yeah. primitive societies. Ah,、uh, exactly. Ha, so this sun and moon and the sun. 这个原始的社会，哈，所以现在社会也是一样，哈，还它就是时间的概念，那就是对我们生活有很大的影响，所以我们就会用这些东西来命名。Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So our first sentence in the article it says, "In dozens of languages around the world,"、um, "dozen" means twelve, and so when we say when we say dozens, we're talking about more than one set of twelve. So it's minimum twenty-four, but more like thirty-six, forty-eight. 
but are, you know, dozens means quite a few,、mm. but it's not as many as hundreds. And it's weird to say tens in English for some reason. You could say in tens of languages around the world, you could, and it would be weird. So we like to say dozens, even though it's largely the same concept. Groups of ten or groups of twelve is a similar quantity of of things. When we do use tens,、uh, it's in groups like tens of thousands、yeah. of people or tens of millions of something. You wouldn't say dozens of millions. No. Because、um, I mean, partly because we have two competing concepts of how to do numbers. One is the the decimal system based on ten, and one is the I don't know the name of it, but when you base numbers on twelve,、hmm. and twelve is the older system. Duodecimal. Duodecimal. Yes, the duodecimal system. So dozens is kind of an older way of saying groups of ten because yeah, we, we have thought of twelve inches to the foot.、Mm-hmm. For example, because twelve is more readily divisible by th- by more things, you can divide it by three, by two, and by six, and also by four. four. But ten is only divisible by two and five. So twelve, in a number of ways, is a much more convenient measuring system, and that's why it has persisted in our measurements. So, anyways, this persists in our saying in dozens of languages around the world. So, in all these languages around the world, the day Thursday is named in honor of a god associated with thunder and lightning, and that's really cool.、Mm-hmm. 好，那刚刚这个 Bruce 老师跟这个 Angel 老师有一个很很有趣的讨论哈。那首先各位要先注意一点哈，就是英文里面 dozens of 好，这个不会只有十二个啊。它至少会有24个，因为 dozen 是一打嘛，啊，那通常呢比较可能，当你听到 dozens of 的时候呢，你想到的数字大概是就是它可能36或者48啊，啊，那就中文可以翻成数十个，啊，但是各位要注意，就是通常英文要表达数十个，比较不会说 tens of， 例如说这个地方。啊，比英文就比较不会说 in tens of languages 啊，就是听起来就很怪啊，英文不是这样用的。那 tens of 通常是什么东西呢？就像 Bruce 老师讲出来，你听到 tens of 通常 tens of thousands， tens of millions 啊，这个时候你会有 tens of 好，所以这个是习惯，这个你比较难去找出一个真正呃确定、很确实的理由啊，告诉我们说为什么我们这里不会说 in tens of languages， 我们会讲 in dozens of languages， 这第一点要要注意的啊。那另外一个呢，刚刚他们。还提到一个所谓的 decimal 跟这个 dual decimal 的差别哈 ，decimal 就是十进位的哈，它的拼法是 d e c i m a l 啊，所以说 tens of 那就是 decimal， 那另外一个 dual decimal 就是跟十二比较有关系的哈 ，d u o。D E C I M A L， 好，那这个 Angel 老师提出一个我觉得很有趣的一个一个理由，他说很多时候其实十二是比较好，呃，作为单位是比较好的，因为十二可以被比较多的数字来除啊。那十的话呢，听起来比较完整，可是十它就比没有像十二一样能够被那么多的数字来整除啊。所以也许就是因为这样，所以这个我们有时候用十进位，有时候用十二进位啊。那在这个地方，各位要特别注意的，就是 dozens of， 这是英文的习惯啊，不会讲 in tens of languages， 而且 dozens of， 你还要注意，它至少有24个啊，那它比较可能是6三十啊、4 8等等的。那我们再回来看这个句子，他说啊，在全世界数十个语言当中呢，这个礼拜四这一天 is named， 它的名字怎么来的呢 ？is named， 它取名是 in honor of， 就是这个呃，它是为了尊敬。一个神，那这个神是什么神呢？它是 associated with， 所以在数十个语言里面都一样。礼拜四这个呃呃礼拜四这一天，它取名字都是为了要尊敬一个神。呃，这个神通常都是 associated with， 就这个神是跟什么会联想在一起呢？跟 thunder 雷啊，还有呢 lightning 闪电会联想在一起。The particular god may not be the same across cultures, but the namesake is consistently A high-ranking deity that controls this specific weather phenomenon. Now, thunder and lightning occur together, which is why we can say weather phenomenon, which is the singular form. If we were talking about maybe、uh, snow and wind, those would be weather phenomena, which would be the O N at the end of phenomenon becomes an A, phenomena. So let's go back here. The particular god may not be the same across cultures. How could it be? People have different imaginations. But what is interesting is the namesake,、uh, the the word given to the day that we call Thursday, 
is consistently uh, from culture to culture, regardless of the language and and, uh, their history and so on, is usually, is consistently a high-ranking deity. Deity is another word for God. Shaoshi had a G-O-D, a God, that controls uh, the lightning and thunder. OK， 好，那这个地方我们看到他说呢 ，the particular god 就是那个特定的那个神啊 ，may not be the same across cultures。across cultures 就是各文化啊，各文化之间呢，那个特定的那个神啊 ，may not be the same， 也许不会是同一个啊。但是呢 ，the namesake 啊 ，namesake 就是 a person or thing named after another 啊，或者是 a person or thing with the same name as another 啊，所以就同样的这一个名字呢。Is consistently a high-ranking deity. 好 consistently 就是一致的，都是如此的。好，那个 sist 是站的意思 ，stand 的意思。哈，那 con 就是一起，所以大家站的都一样，就是一致的，都是如此的。好，所以这个 namesake 它一致的或都是如此的啊，同它通通都一样啊。特定的神也许不一样，但这个名字通常都代表的是一个 high-ranking。Deity, 一个高位阶的 deity 就是一个神啊。那通常 deity 比较不用来指基督教那个神啊，通常就是指这个呃神话里面的一些神啊。那这个神怎么样 ？Controls， 它会控制这个特定的这个 weather phenomenon 啊。那要注意，这 phenomenon 在这里是单数啊。那可能有人会想说，哎，前面不是讲到 thunder 跟 lightning 吗？为什么是单数呢？因为 thunder 跟 lightning 在英文里面概念，它是属于同一种东西，就可以视为单数。好，那刚刚 Bruce 老师讲说，如果你这个地方讲的这个 weather 啊，是指什么 snow 跟 wind 的话，那就是 weather phenomena 啊，是呃 p h e n o m e n a 啊，那是现象的复数。啊，所以如果是 snow and wind 就不会把它看成一体，但是 thunder and lightning 你可以把它看成一个，所以可以用单数的 phenomenon。Because they're two aspects of the same thing。哦，因为你可以说这个呃、uh, thunder 跟 lightning 是 two aspects of the same thing。One is sound and one is light。Yeah， 它是两个不同的面向啊，所以它可以是一体的两面，所以它是一个东西。The thing I like most about this, the thing that is so cool about this, is that this is kind of Across cultures, this is predating language. So this is something it implies that this is something that we culturally, as human beings, had in common before these cultures split off from each other, and、yeah. that is what the neatest thing about this is. And so,、um, in the next paragraph, we're going to talk about the various versions in different languages of this phenomenon. So, in ancient Greece, it was Hemera Dios, the day of Zeus. Hmm. 好，所以呢，这个很有趣，各文化都是这样子哈。所以在这个古希腊呢，啊，这个这一天叫做 the day of Zeus， 就是这个宙斯之日啊。The god of the sky and thunder, Zeus, was often depicted, was often painted and drawn or described in some way with a lightning bolt. When you see lightning in the sky, we call that a lightning bolt. It's a measure word for lightning raised above his head. Uh, and if he's raising it, he's controlling it. Hmm. 好，所以呢，这个呃，所以宙斯他是谁呢？他是 the god of the sky and thunder。他是天空还有雷电之神啊，在希腊神话里面是这样子。然后呢，他 was often depicted with 啊，就他通常描述或不管是绘画还是雕刻呢啊，他常常那个形象啊 depicted 被描绘。啊，怎么样描绘呢 ？With a lightning bolt， 好 ，a lightning bolt 就一个闪电，就中文就是讲可以讲一道闪电那样子啊。那这个一会有一道闪电 raised above his head， 举在他的头上啊，表示这是他控制的东西。So now in Rome, people honored Jupiter, who was essentially their version of Zeus. When you say essentially, you're saying at basic they were the same god. Yeah, fundamentally. Yeah, 就基本上哈，或者 in essence 啊，就是基本上。所以这个地方讲到说，在罗马呢，人们 honored 他们敬拜的是 Jupiter 啊，那他是怎么样？他基本上是罗马人的版本 of Zeus 啊。所以这个以前我们在上西洋文学概论的时候，我们就学这个同样一个神啊，我们的学法就是希腊是这样子叫他啊，那罗马希腊神话里面是这样称，那罗马神话里面是这样称，那他们其实是同一个神。In Latin, the day is called Dies Jovis. Now, J O V I is a, a stem 
for Jupiter. So you may read something about astronomy, and they will talk about the Jovian moons. Uh, how many there are now? I don't remember. 30 or 40 moons circling Jupiter. Uh, J-O-V-I-A-N is another adjective for Jupiter. Mm. Mm, because Jove is another name for Zeus. Right. Ah, so Jove is Zeus's other name. Jove. J-O-V-E. Yeah, Jove. Okay, so in Latin, this day, it's called the Jove Day. And this connection with Jupiter can still be found today in French, Portuguese, Italian, and Spanish, which are essentially the languages that Latin turned into. Latin devolved into four separate languages. Five. Five? What's the fifth? Romanian. Oh, that's right. I always forget about Romanian. Which will... is the closest to Latin. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely <laughs> enough. It's the closest to Latin and the one most quickly forgotten. And now <laughs> I feel very bad for forgetting about them. Hmm. Oh, so you know. 这个连接哈，就是这这个跟 Jupiter 这个这个东西的这个连接呢，现在你可以在法文、在这个葡萄牙文、意大利文还有西班牙文里面都可以看到哈。那这几个语言都跟这个呃拉丁文有很直接的关系哈。另外一个就是这个 Romanian 哈，它也是跟拉丁文有很有关系的。In many modern Indian languages, Thursday Guruvara honors Brahaspati. Who was a god associated with the planet Jupiter? So we have this theme occurring again and again, and、uh, most of my friends here in Taiwan are shocked to find out that Hindi, the major language of、uh, South Asia, is related to the European languages. We come from the same source, the same stem. Yeah, 好，所以 Hindi 哈，这个呃语系呢，其实是呃属于欧洲的一个语系哈。所以他说，在这里讲看到，在很多现代的印度语言里面呢，啊，这个礼拜四呢，他敬拜的是这样的一个神哈。那他是一个神，这个神跟怎么样？跟 The Planet Jupiter 跟木星是有连在一起的，所以都有关联的。Now, when it comes to Old Germanic dialects, which is a subset of a language. Thursday was Thor's day, and you can hear it even in the English word. Hmm. So, you know, when it comes to, 就当我们说到古日耳曼的方言 dialect 就是方言啊，在古日耳曼的方言里面呢，星期四就是所谓的索尔之日啊 ，Thor's day. Like Zeus and Jupiter, Thor was a powerful leader who controlled the weather. Uh, Thor was the second most important of the、uh, Viking gods. Hmm. 好，所以呢，这个就好像 Zeus 跟 Jupiter 一样，哈，这个 Thor 就是雷神索尔，啊，他是一个 powerful leader， 他是一个有很大力量的一个领导者。那他怎么样呢 ？Who controlled the weather？ 他是主宰气候或者天气的神。Thor was still the god being referenced when the English word for Thursday emerged, which I just mentioned. However, some translations suggest that the Old English word "thundersdag" actually meant "thunder's day," and so maybe doesn't come from Thor's day, which I'm interested in. Yeah, so most of the time, because this Thor and Thursday sound really similar, ah, so everyone talks about this. Here, we talk about Thor is still the god being referenced. Ah, reference means mention, ah, means reference or mention to cite as a reference. 啊，所以大家都觉得，哎，应该是这样哈。When the English word for Thursday emerged， 当英文 Thursday 这个字慢慢出现的时候呢，大家觉得啊，应该是跟这个呃 Thor 这个神有关。但他这里提到说，有一些 translations， 有一些这个呃翻译显示呢，这个古英文里面有一个字啊，就这个字哈，这个这个字呢，这个啊，我也不知道怎么念，刚刚 Angel 老师刚念过了哈。那事实上，这个字它的意思就是 thunders。Day 就是雷霆之日，好，然后就慢慢演变成为 Thursday。所以 Thursday 这个字到底怎么来的，还没有定论。This similarity of the root of the name for Thursday among different cultures and languages is an example of a loan translation in which a word or the root of a word is adopted by another language as its own. Now English is replete. With loan words,、yeah. most of English is not from England. 
嗯哼，啊<笑> ，is replete with 就是充满的的意思哈，那个 replete 的 r e p l e t e 哈 ，is replete with 就充满到处都是的意思。So in linguistics, we often talk about a loan word、mm-hmm. uh, that that comes to us、um, a walk. Mm. Uh, which we use in English to describe gods、yeah. comes from the Cantonese dialect for、yeah. gods.、Mm-hmm. That's a loan word because we didn't have any walks. Which、mm-hmm. is why we have both kung fu and gong fu in English now, because one came us came to us through Cantonese and one came to us through Mandarin, and they're both you know gong fu. Yeah. Hmm. Ah.、Uh, so. It- 英文有呃，其实所有的语言都有所谓的 loan word 哈，这个 l o a n 哈，就借用的字，从别的语言借用的字，就他这个语言里面本来没有这个字，那别的语言有啊，他就很多时候就直接借用过来。那借用过来的时候，他的发音可能会变啊，看他从这个语言里面怎么样过来。像功夫哈，这个英文可以讲功夫，也可以讲 kung fu 哈，都可以哈。那不同的透过不同的路进入了英文。好，所以这地方讲到说这个诶。哎 A similarity of the root of the name for Thursday. So, Thursday, this name, its roots are so similar. Among different cultures and languages, we talked about different cultures and different languages. But we talked about Thursday, its roots are so similar. So, this is an example. This is an example. What is an example? It is a loan translation. It is a translation of a loan. 啊，那所谓的 a loan translation 就是怎么样 ？In which a word 啊，一个字或者是 the root of the a word 或这个字的字根 is adopted 被采用 by another language 被另外一个语言采用的 as its own 啊，当做自己的啊，把它采用过来就变成当当做自己的。好 ，adopt 就是采用，那个 opt 是 choose 的意思。好，那个 ad 是 to， 所以 adopted 就是去选择。目的是要采用它，所以就被借用过去的。那英文里面有很多很多借用的字，哈。那中文里面也有啊，但英文应该是这个吸纳性最强的一个语言啊。刚刚我们已经举了几个例子了。嗯、yeah. ，We've stolen more words than any other language. Um, a long sorry. I wanted to say something arch about colonialism, but I won't. <laughs> yeah, 啊，所以不过至少其实英文里面啊，各位可以注意到那个多音节的字，大部分都。不是这个原原始的 old English 啊 ，old English 的特色就它的音节比较短 ，Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's why spelling in English is such a mess, and why grammar in English is such a mess, and、yeah. why everything in English is such a mess because English just loves to collect things. I mean, our basic verb to be comes、yeah. from three different languages. The way we use it. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. I found this out recently, and I'm like, that explains so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 所以中文呃英文里面 be 这个动词呢，其实是从三个不同的语言哈这样这样收集过来的。Yeah. He is our was were. Oh yeah.、Uh, yeah.、Well, that would have been Old English. Bin, was were. Bin. A bin. All、right? these things. Ah, <laughs> 很复杂 Yeah. It's a pain, but also that's why you love to study it with us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, as the concept of the seven-day week spread around the world, many cultures stuck with the theme for each day. They're like, "Oh, cool day themes. That's nice." But they just amended the name or changed the name to match their particular god who fit the role. We're like, "Yeah, Thursday is good. Can we use our god's thir- our our thunder god?" Yes, let's do that. Yeah. So, 随着这个一个礼拜有七天这样的一个 concept. Spread around the world, 啊，这个散播到全世界，好，那很多的文化都会 stuck with， 就是被被粘住的，难以脱身，啊，大家都都粘住了，都没有办法换了，好，被什么东西粘住没有办法换呢 ？The theme for each day， 哈，这每一个礼拜一天的，那礼一个礼拜每一天的这个主题，啊，因为。随着这七天的一个礼拜这样的一个概念传到全世界，所以这个主题很多文化也觉得，哎，因为是外来的，他们就觉得好像不容易换了，好，所以他们只会怎么样 ，amend it， 就修正一下 the name， 好，目的是可以 match， 可以配合 their particular god， 他们特定的一些神，那这个神是怎么样 ，who fit。The role, 哈，这适合这个角色的这个各个的神。那 fit 在这里呢是过去式，哈，所以它没有加 s， 它只用过去式。Now we have some questions here for you. Number one of which is, what do the gods Zeus and Jupiter have in common besides being gods? 啊，所以呢 ，Zeus 跟 Jupiter 这两个神有什么一样的地方呢？它除了他们都是神之外，他们有什么共同处呢？ The answer is they are both gods of the sky who have the power over thunder and lightning. 好，答案是他们都是天空之神啊。那他们有这个能力可以掌管雷电。The second question: 
What term refers to the use of a word across different languages? 啊，有什么字可以用来指称不同文化使用同一个字呢 ？The answer is loan translation. 就是这个借用的翻译。Well, thanks for joining us today.、Uh, we'll see. We three will see you guys out there next month.、Uh, have a great summer and、uh, play safe. Till the next time. Bye bye. bye.